Absalom, the son of King David, returned to Jerusalem after three years of exile, which most likely he spent them here in Bethsaida, the capital of the kingdom of Gshur. This was after he killed Amnon, who was his brother from another mother. And let's not forget that Absalom killed Amnon after Amnon raped his sister, Tamar. King David did not want to see Absalom for four years since he returned from the kingdom of Shur to Jerusalem. After four years, Absalom finally turned to Joab, son of Suya, head of the army for King David, with a complaint as described in the second book of Samuel chapter 14. He asked Joab, why did I return from Shur? It was good for me there. He demanded to meet the king while stating that if he had done something wrong, then he should be executed. In light of the amazing view of the Sea of Galilee and the uh, Jordan River, one can understand why Absalom enjoyed himself in this area. Not only Bethsaida is located near the Sea of Galilee, it was also larger and more magnificent than Jerusalem of David's time. The mound is located on top of a basalt hill coming down from the Golan Heights and it has an area of roughly 80 dunams equivalent to 20 acres. Bethsaida was founded in the 10th century BC. It was probably called Ser or Tzed, and in the book of Joshua, chapter 19, it is written as follows. And the fortified city were Ser, Hamath, Rakath, and Kinneret. Looking at the map and the location of these places, it looks as they are all fishing towns around the Sea of Galilee going clockwise. During the biblical period and until Assyria conquered the area, the northeast of the Sea of Galilee was part of the army kingdom of Shur. From the excavations conducted here over the years, it can be concluded that Bethsaida was the capital of this kingdom. In this video, I will focus on the history of Bethsaida, its location, the impressive city wall and gate, and the kingdom of Shur with an emphasis on its relationship with the kingdoms of Judah and Israel until the Assyrian conquer the area. Shur is first mentioned in the Alamarna letters from the 14th century BC, which were written by various rulers, most of them Canaanites, and sent to the king of Egypt. In these letters, seven city-states are mentioned whose union created the kingdom of Shur. The kingdom of Shur is mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy as the border of half the tribe of Menashe, located in the east side of the Jordan River. A small shift of topic, political marriage. So, many political marriages took place during the biblical period. It's interesting that in most of them, the stronger party in the peace treaty offers his daughter to the weaker party. And this is probably to plant in the married royal dynasty a loyal branch that will not seek to dissolve the alliance. If this was indeed the case, then in the marriage of King David and Maha, daughter of Talmai or Ptolemy in Aramaic, the king of Shur as described in the second book of Samuel chapter 3, then the kingdom of Shur had the stronger status. The marriage of David and Maha led to Shur's involvement in the kingdoms of Israel and Judea for at least five generations. In total, David and his dynasty enjoyed the alliance with the kingdom of Shur. 
I will mention one case described in the second book of Samuel chapter 10, according to which, unlike the four kingdoms of Aram, which were Aram Beit Rehov, Aram Tsova, Maacha, and Ishtov, the kingdom of Shur refused to join the Aramic alliance that tried to rescue Hanun, king of Ammon, from the hands of King David. Absalom was the son of David and Maacha. After the killing of Amnon, who was also the heir to the throne, Absalom fled to Gshur and stayed here for three years. Here he planned his revolt against King David and how he would take over the throne. I will not elaborate further on this fascinating story, yet we all know the end. Absalom was killed during the revolt. He left after his death a daughter named Maha as his mother's name. A generation later, King Rehoboam, the son of King Salmon, married Maha, Absalom's daughter, and he loved her the most out of all his wives and concubines. Probably also due to the connections she created for him with the Aramic kingdoms of Shur, Maacha, and Damascus. Let's move forward to the next generation. Maacha, daughter of Absalom, was the mother of King Abijah, Avia in Hebrew, son of Rehoboam. And she was also the grandmother of King Asa. According to the Bible, she introduced other gods to the residents of Jerusalem. Asa, her grandson, removed the monster as stated in the Bible. This is what his grandmother made. He burned it in Kidron Brook and removed his grandmother from her position. Still, King Asa did use the ancient connections with the Aramic kingdoms while giving part of the temple treasure as a bribe. The bribe was given in order to divert the kingdom of Aram Damascus against Baasha, king of Israel, who threatened to conquer Jerusalem. This is the last known case of Kshur's involvement in the affairs of the kingdoms of Judah and Israel. The kingdom of Kshur was destroyed in the 8th century BC after the conquest of Aram Damascus between the years 732 and 734 BC. And this was done by Tiglat Pileser III, king of Ashuria. The fortification system was built in a massive way and was intended to respond to the main penetrating weapon of that period, which was the siege tower and the battering ram. It is easy to be impressed by the massive inner wall, and you can also see the tower in the exposed area, and that went up to 10 meters, and also the outer wall, which is lower. We arrived at the city gate, which is located in the eastern section. The gate was a complex fortified structure. It included an outer gate, which we don't see, and an inner gate with four guard towers at each of the sides and a paved corridor between the four cells. This is a courtyard. This is, to my knowledge, the largest and most well-preserved gate discovered in Israel at the site from the Biblical period. In those days, the public life of a Biblical city, that is, worship, trade, trials, 
and also punishment of criminals was conducted in the courtyard of the city gate. The inner gate has four cells, two on each side. Three cells were used as silos, and the first cell on the right, and we will see it shortly, kept the offerings that were brought to the stage of worship. A large quantity of charred barley and wheat grains, weighing approximately one ton, was found in the gate cells. It seems that the grains were shot when the gate was destroyed and burned by Tiglat Pileser III, king of Assyria, between 732 and 734 BC. The inner gate was preserved to a height of three meters. The prophet Ezekiel used the term cells as described in chapter 40 of his book. The gate was built with basalt stones, mostly very large field stones. It was between two and three stories high. The upper stories were plastered with white plaster, and therefore when the gate stood in all its glory, the stones and bricks that made it up were not visible. The gate was built in the middle of the 9th century BC and was destroyed by a fierce fire. It existed for 120 years. The gate threshold is about 30 centimeters above the corridor that connected between the entrance and the exit of the gate structure. It is called in the Bible the Hall of the Gate as described in the book of Ezekiel chapter 40. In the center of the threshold is a stop stone. It is a semi-round and well-cut stone. The hinges of the door were in a recess, 30 centimeters deep to prevent access to them. Nothing was preserved of the door hinges. This section of the gate was found completely burned. A large warehouse structure is integrated in the southwest corner where we are of the gate. This structure was built as one unit with the gate. The warehouse was densely filled with jars of various sizes, but not one of them survived. The occupation saw destruction and devastation in all the large and fortified cities in the area. It didn't destroy Bethsaida to a level that it stopped to exist, but it depleted it to such an extent that it never returned to its former glory days. And to conclude, as usual, I have a question for you. Who is responsible for the killing of Absalom? The answer will appear in five seconds.